good afternoon to the viewers and see today we are going to discuss about the cultural globalization and this is the very interesting topic and fascinating topic for all of us because culture generally interrelate with each and every one's life and whatever interconnections we have been seeing across the world where the culture is the one of the pivotal role always playing in interconnecting the people interconnecting the society interconnecting the nations as well so uh, this topic is basically concerned with the international uh, relations uh, global politics paper and basically we are going to discuss about it ki how this cultural globalizations has been uh, <coughs> creating a new kind of global world and uh, so th 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 this is the one of the topic which we are going to discuss today and basically uh, the whole the purpose of understanding this cultural globalization understanding uh, within the perspective of the global politics ki whether the culture is uh, uh, in, in, integrating and intens intensifying across the society across the nation uh, and uh, there is a one kind of cosmopolitan culture is evolving at the uh, world level or there is a still a national culture kind of thing local culture kind of thing or is there is any possibility of there is a world culture kind of thing so basically we are uh, discussing uh, today to say uh this culture that is one of the phenomena which we are understanding that has been uh, interrelated and related with our day to day life how it has been affecting our global politics and keeping this thing in the mind what we have uh, thought that ki first we will start discussing about ki what is culture because as long as we cannot understand ki what is culture we cannot understand uh, what is the global culture and why we are discussing today about the global culture because culture is very specific uh, for every human being and everyone have a certain kind of cultural uh, uh, values systems and uh, th their systems and values are uh, developed on the basis, basis of their uh, social moorings and cultural moorings of of that society so today we are basically going to discuss about ki what is culture then we are going to discuss about what is political culture and then after this culture political culture we are going to interconnect this culture and political culture to the global culture and then we are uh, uh, when we started conceptualizing this culture political culture and the global culture then we are going to uh, discuss and analyze ki where and why this subject is so relevant for all of us to understand ki whether there is a, any kind of global culture or not when we are going to understand whether there is any kind of global culture or not then we are finding that there are three big debates on this issue so, whether there is a global culture kind of things or not one is the globalist who are considering that yes uh, the society has been evolving towards the uh, uh, global culture kind of uh, uh, global culture system and internationalist uh, talking about you know, no, there, there is no, no such kind of thing still the natural national culture is prevailing across the society and this is the uh, interconnectedness among the different nations and that was also uh, prevailed earlier if you see the 18th and 19th 19th century and prior to that and even in the ancient era and there is a transform transformation uh, transformationalist they are talking ki yes there is a uh, uh, two way kind of thing there is not a one way kind of uh, cultural uh, 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 interconnections between the western world to the eastern world but th the system should have been evolved as a two two way of thing and there is a different kind of debate they are discussing about one is cultural swamping then uh, cultural homogenizations and then there is a world culture kind of things so the three big debates have been developed on these issues and later on after uh, discussing all these issues then uh, if we have we we have a time then we are going to discuss about yeah, how on all these three uh, uh, debate how the three main uh, uh, international or global uh, theoretical framework has been emerged at, uh, in the global politics about the culturalization of the uh, <coughs> uh, system or the globalization of the culture and there we, we are going to discuss about the differentialism hybridization and the uh, uh, convergence theory and then we we will have a number of issues so first uh, in this lectures we are going to discuss about what is culture and there we are, we are saying it very uh, very in very simple form we are saying it a culture is defined by unesco as the set of distinctive spiritual material intellectual and emotional features of society or social group see <coughs> because we all of you know right now we are considering uh, one of the pioneer organizations for the united nations uh, uh, education scientific council 
uh, which decides everything about okay, how what what kind of education system what kind of social system what kind of culture system one should have uh, uh, at the global level uh, and they they are tell, talking about uh, and when they are defining about the culture they are talking talking about you see it's, it is a distinctive spiritual material and intellectual and emotional means there are four four things are associated with the culture of every individuals this is not one thing means even it, it has been related with the spiritual like the, 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 there is a aesthetical and, uh, and uh, there is a religious understanding there is also number of rituals uh, of the human beings then there is a material uh, that has been also uh, related with the human society how what kind of cultures they have like the elite cultures like a parochial culture like a civic culture then intellectual kind of understanding like the marxist and liberal perspective we have been seeing and we, our development is based, uh, develop on uh, that region then also the emotional someone is very emotional to their uh, faith reli uh, religious issues and all other things and so they are talking about because it's not confined to only one uh, one uh, one dimensions of the human being it has a very comprehensive and broader understanding about the culture that has been in, uh, uh, encompassed all other aspects whether it's a spiritual whether it's a intellectual whether it's a materials or other other thing so uh, when we understand about these things with such a larger understanding about the uh, the culture then we can easily understand ki when we have to interrelate these issues with the uh, uh, at the global perspective then we can easily understand ki whether the world is going to interconnect on the spiritual basis that the world is going to interconnect with the material basis whether the world is going to interconnect with the intellectual basis whether the world is getting interconnected with the emotional basis and here the, the debate started taking place but before that we are uh, more going to discuss about ki it it also encompasses in addition to art and literature lifestyle ways of living together value system traditions and beliefs now they are talking about you see we all have a different different kind of lifestyles we have a different kind of literature like It, it, uh, for the hind uh, those who are believer of the hinduism they have a uh, great faith in the mahabharata and the ramayana those who are the believer of the islam they have a great faith in the quran those who are believer of the christianity they have a great faith in the bible so there are also there are number of arts and literature we have a marathi telugu bengali and other literatures equally at the world level the english language has been emerging as a, one of the most advantageous language across the world and we have been Uh, uh going through all kind of literatures and arts and understanding then there is a lifestyles we have been seeing there is a homogeneity and heterogeneity as well as if you go to the arab world there are different kind of dressing and styles if you go to the western world you can find resemblances of, of, of all the societal uh, dressing sense even if you go to the india there are different kind of dressing sense but it has been also getting heterogeneizing and homogeneizing so they are talking about you see when we have to discuss about the culture we cannot only Uh, confine it uh, with the issues of ki whether there is only interconnection and in intensifications of uh, un understanding about the one society to the another society but the society has been moving towards a heterogeneity hetero 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 to the homogeneity so they also talking about at the global level what we have been witnessing across the uh, uh, society that uh, there is a one way uh, uh, if you go to any uh, metropolitan city people are resembling with each uh, each other like whether they are the they are follower of the islam whether they are the follower of hinduism whether they are the uh, follower of the christianity uh, whether they are the women whether they are the men most of them have a same kind of dressing uh, sense and you cannot dif differentiate on their uh, dressing sense whether what kind of re religion they are following and what kind of religion they are not following what kind of believer they are and what kind of believer they are not from where they are coming uh, from uh, or not equally in the lang linguistic terms also uh, across the world what we have been witnessing that english has been emerging as a common language so uh, unofficially it has been become a official language so they are talking about you see Uh, the world is getting interconnected across the world whether you want to follow the christianity whether you want to follow the hinduism whether you want to follow uh, islam everywhere you, you will have access and whatever the lifestyle you want to access you can have a easily accessible across the world so when we try to interconnect it with the culture with the global culture we are finding that you see these all the things are getting interrelated whether it's a spiritual material intellectual or emotional or lifestyle way of living or value systems we are finding that whether it has been somewhere interconnecting with the world system so they are talking about in the third point the culture is essential human characteristics expressing our nature as aware of the social being so they are talking about you see on any society 
if you are the part of the uh, any society they have a certain kind of culture and they follow that culture and on that culture they, uh, they try to develop the, the, their understanding they try to behave uh, behave accordingly they uh, try to follow that kind of rituals and norms and equally at the world level when we move forward we also see it you see there is a certain norms at the world level as well where we generally follow it so it is all involves like the values symbols meaning and expectations it tell a uh, culture is all about it tell us who 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 uh, who we are what is important to and how we should be have means it has been a reaction of sentiment of the people means it it it, it is creating a one kind of political system for all, all of us ki how as a civilized society we can live together so overall when we try to understand about the culture what we have found it it is a very comprehensive understanding about the human behavior it is very com- uh, co- complex also to understand ki what kind of value systems we have been following it it is also related with the emotions symbols and their expectations so it is not only uh, confined to the one issue it has been a number of issues and on that issues we developed ki whether this value system has been getting uh, assimilated at the world level whether the all the symbolism whether the hindus or the muslims or the sikhs or christians whether they are all getting integrated whether we, we we all have a same kind of understanding and the feeling so basically we are mainly going to discuss all the issues in all, uh, in this uh, globalization of culture and then here because we are just developing our understanding from culture to the political culture and here what we have been saying the political culture denotes the sum of the fundamental values sentiments and knowledge that give the form and substance to political process now see because we all are in the present world living in certain kind of political systems whether it's a liberal whether it's a authoritarian whether it's a illiberal whether it's a federal whether it's a unitary we all have a certain kind of political system and this political system based on our uh, our fundamental values like we number of time discussed about ki why not india follow the presidential system why not india uh, why india follow the parliamentary system why not india is going go with adopting the dictatorial systems so how we can decide it 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 develop on our understanding our thinking our value what kind of our nature is why india became a secular and why pakistan uh, declared uh, their, their state religion why america separating their uh, uh, state and religion uh, different thing but india being a secular country has a uh, fusion of the religion and the uh, institutions so these all things are developed on our understanding about the uh, issues and as the indians we all have a great faith and believe on the religious issues and we believe that this religion is not that can be segregated from the institutions and and it has been separated from the state because the state and religion because as long as you cannot be uh, have a uh, feeling that one should be a believer about the, the issues one should uh, uh, keep this thing in the mind ki what should uh, one should do and what what one should not do so they also consider ki if even if we segregate the state from the religion the state also has some moral obligations and this moral obligations would uh, uh, depend on what kind of our religious beliefs like when we follow the panchila th- theory we follow the concept of the buddhism so equally when we follow the concept of the ahimsa that is that was also one, one kind of our cultural imbibes so we cannot uh, just segregate uh, the, uh, the our systems and beliefs from the our political process so they try to tell us ki see when we move from the culture to the political culture what we understood that ki see the culture is a very <coughs> comprehensive dimensions that that is that is basically expressions of the human characteristics ki what kind of system uh, what kind of values they have what kind of uh, beliefs they have what kind of uh, 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 emotions uh, they express and equally the political culture form on that issues and when we keep all these things and when we know this fact that you see every state and every society has a different kind of cultural notions every society and individual have a different kind of faith and belief and then when we, they become at uh, they, they reach at the global platform 
how they can interact and interrelate with each other and here the process of globalization started taking place and here the culture of globalization has been started taking place and here what we understood that you see when we talk about what is globalization we consider globalization is about the growing worldwide interconnection between the societies now see till today or um, prior to uh, mainstream uh, theory of the uh, international relations we understood and we defined that a state to state relation is the international politics or relations among the states that is called the international relations or international politics but now due to this globalization we are now talking about the rolling back of the state a state is to come like john wiseman he said you see the growing interconnectedness between the societies growing interconnectedness intensification of the relation between the states uh, and uh, across the globe that had been created one kind of global market and one kind of the global culture means national culture has been now diluting and the global culture has been emerging so equally uh, <clears throat> Mughalan also talking about the same thing. You see, the interconnections and the emergence of the English language all have been interconnected the society among, uh, across the world. So here, uh, when we when we started discussing about okay, what is the uh, global culture, what is uh, 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 culture, uh, how we can differentiate and define okay, what, whether the culture of globalization is going on or not, then we are trying to understand. You see, when we started discussing and analyzing about. the interconnection between the societies we understand you see certain kind of process have been started taking place across the world and here when we uh, uh, started once again analyzing about the globe then we see a culture in many sense the most direct obvious and visible way in which we experience the interconnection in our daily lives we we'll see when there is a movement like what is the globalization globalization is talking about free flow of the human okay. beings free flow of the idea free flow of the technology free flow of the trade and investment but when this is the free flow what kind of the free flow it is it is free when the when the indian would go to work in the canada when indian would go to work in the america if indian would go for the education for the uh, in the harvard and oxford university if indian would go for the trade and investment in the africa they would also carry their own religious beliefs their culture their language their thinkings and there they would have interact with the other culture and exposure as well so they they trying to tell us you see the way the globe is getting interconnected and interrelated with each other the national boundaries has been losing its relevance and and the national culture is also losing its relevance and one kind of cosmopolitan culture is emerging across the world and here the, the here the big debate started taking place across the international politics where one is talking about you see the way world is getting in, 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 integrated the the way world is uh, uh, the way economy is getting integrated the the way society is getting integrated the way communication technology has been evolved in the last 30 and 40 years the way the uh, the world institutions have been emerged it has been created a one kind of systems where across the human we have been uh, developing a certain kind of uh, culture that is known as the global culture and here when we started defining about ki what is global culture then what we are finding here it is a crucial component of globalization because it's through culture that common understanding develops so culture is central to connection between places and nations now here uh, it's a very simple understanding because see till uh, uh, i have given the two and three points part to this understanding about what is the global culture i have said ki see every human being have a certain kind of cultural notion every human being have a certain kind of uh, faith belief religion and some certain kind of uh, social moorings and on that basis they developed about uh, their understanding about the political form formations and the political notions and on that they developed uh, certain kind of ideas as well like for the example if i uh, uh, try to elaborate it if you go to, uh, to and understand the international relations theory of constructivism then why every indian has a certain kind of pessimistic view about the globe, pakistan but why not the Nep Nep nepalese though, though it, it it is also a hindu dominated nations but they don't have a pessimistic notions about the pakistan why this kind of uh, why there is a two uh, the same neighbor uh, south asian neighbor, neighboring countries but the way the every indian as, is considering the pakistani as a uh, terrorist state pakistan as a failed state pakistan as a state which has been always 
trying to create certain, certain kind of disturbance. Pakistan as a hub of the global terrorist. Why not the other nations can, uh, think in such a directions? Here they, they try to talk about it. You see, it is a moorings. It is a understanding. It's it, it's a constructions. What we mix mix about it. Like every Pakistani consider always that whatever the problem they have been facing, the that problem has been already manifested by the Indians. So these two kind of ideas developed though Indian always uh, in, in, in uh, whether it's Indian establishment whether the Indian people or whether the society they always want a peaceful uh, structure between the India and Pakistan but always the, there is a difference between the India and Pakistan on the every issue why it is so so here what we uh, when we try to understand the, it is due to our cultural differences and what kind of cultural differences because uh, and historical past that developed our understanding about each other. Though there is also the part of, of Pakistan, it is also a Bangladesh. Earlier it was East Pakistan, but now we do not have this kind of feeling towards the Bangladesh because we developed and we bridged the gap, but still we have been unable to bridge the gap between the Pakistan. So the, <coughs> so the, so the here the understanding is, you see, when we talk about there is a global culture, and here they are talking about it is the crucial component of the globalization because it is through culture that common understanding develops. Why not there is a common understanding developing between the two nations? Because we have a certain differences. On the issue of Kashmir, Pakistan say it is an unfinished agenda. We say because we are the secular countries and uh, it is a legally uh, having inst uh, instrument of assistance signed by the, uh, uh, the then uh, crown or uh, then the prince. So there is no question of the Pakistan uh, unnecessarily claiming that part of the Kashmir. Kas so, one is there is a, uh, there is a uh, differences Pakistan is considering because the Kashmir is a Muslim majority. So, it should be given to uh, Pakistan. India is considering India is a several country and every, every religious peoples are living in this country. So, why on the name of religion ni neither India and Pakistan got divided it was the political compulsion. So, how we, uh, we develop this kind of political notion? We develop this political notion on the basis of our the political culture, because the political culture what we imbibed at what we understood, because the Congress never ever accepted the two nations theory, or the government of uh, government of India or the literature and art and literature never ever accepted this uh, cultural notion. Uh, equally in the Pakistan, they never ever accepted the cultural and political notions of the India. So, we are finding this kind of differences. But at the global level, when we started talking about, you see, after the 90s and after a 60s, a global culture has been evolving. So, what kind of global culture has been evolving? They are talking about, you see, global culture has been evolving on the basis of the common understanding. So, what kind of the common, common, common understanding evolving? Now, they are talking about, you see, across the world. Every individual, every society, every state want to develop themselves. On the, on the, if they want to develop themselves, on what basis they want to develop themselves? Here the idea is developing, you see, everyone wanted to integrate the economy, everyone wanted to integrate the culture, everyone wanted to educate and impart their, uh, educate their society, everyone wanted to uh, develop their human index. So, and there is the inter uh, interconnections between the society and there is the global positioning where e even if the state or the center wanted to confine their people and citizen to not interconnect with the others, uh, the, the people have a easy as access to get interconnected with others. So, there is a, there is a uh, now a, a globe has become a global village and a common understanding and common knowledge has been developed across the world whether whether in the linguistic term whether in the cultural terms whether in the social terms whether in the political terms so they are talking about you see a global culture has been emerging uh, whether it is a economic culture whether it is a political culture whether it is a social practices whether it is a uh, other issues everywhere what we have been finding whether you are the uh, citizen of the Africa, whether you are the citizen of India, whether you are the citizen of the Latin America, whether you are the citizen of America, you can find there is certain com com commonalities across the world. Like for the example, if you take it more example like the environmental issues, like whether you are living in the China, whether you are living in the India or the America or the Britain or the Latin America, everyone is equally concerned about the depression of the ozone. So, there is a culture has been evolving across the so uh, society and it, this culture is developing about the common understanding that we should preserve our earth, we should protect our uh, uh, environment and then we can save the human 
human species. So, they are talking about across the world also, if we start understanding about the global culture or culturalization of the uh, globalization of the culture, then we, uh, you can easily understand in this, this slide also, they are talking about the culture is complicated and pervasive phenomena. They are talking about, you see, it is one side they are talking about it is a complicated because they are different kind of culture. You cannot mix up the culture of Nigeria and the India. You cannot mix up the culture of the Pakistan and the India. You cannot mix up the uh, language even within the India. You cannot uh, also have the same uh, social values and the family values of the America and the India. So, they are talking about, so it is a complicated, but at the same time only present. Even if you want to know about the American culture, you, that is very easily available. If you want to see the Hollywood movie, that is very uh, uh, easily available in the India and across the world, uh, whether you are staying in the Saudi Arabia, whether you are staying in the Pakistan, whether you are staying in the India, or even if you want to get any kind of literature, any kind of book that can easily available through the e-commerce. So, they are talking about that though it is complicated, but it is a pervasive phenomenon means everywhere they are present, taking many form in the global politics like within the globalist perspective, one who argued that the decline of national culture and rise to the fore of the global culture. Now, here once again the theoretical framework has been emerging. What I have discussed about, you see from culture to the political culture to the global culture, what we understood here about the culture, when we try to uh, uh, distinguish between these all three, then one side we are understanding, you see, it is a uh, culture is basically a human values hmm? <coughs> and it is uh, and that values give a, a certain kind of characteristics of our understanding about the society, about the politics, about the notions. And this sum of all this understanding developed as our political understanding and that that give the shape of uh, formation of the political process. And then when the nations across the society due to this uh, rise of the technology and in innovations and uh, other kind of uh, things, what we have in understanding that on this common understanding of the system, we developed certain kind of global uh, culture. And here, when we say that there is a understanding developed on the basis of the global uh, common understanding, uh, on the basis of the common, un, common understanding, a system uh, that has been developed across the world that is known as the global culture, then there is a debate. And debate is, there are three kinds of debate. One is the globalist, another is the internationalist and third one is transformationalist. And the globalist talking about, you see, there is a decline of the national culture and rise of the four of the global culture. And they are talking about why there is a decline of the global culture. They are talking about there is a decline of the global national culture because whether you are living in the India, whether you are in the America, whether you are in the Africa, now the national culture cannot confine the people within the national boundaries. Now the people have a global access. Why these are the global? Why there is a global access? Because due to the rise of the technology. What kind of the rise of the technology? There, uh, they, they are talking about the, the, uh, after 1960s, if you see <coughs> whether in that broadcasting of the television, whether it is a revolution in, in, in the internet technology or whether you see the WhatsApp or the mobile and everywhere you find ki everyone is now get, easily getting uh, access with all others and they are knowing each other culture and so the natural, national culture is diluting and the global culture is evolving across the world. And if we see in the next slides, what we, we are understanding, they argue that with the new communication technology, we are moving towards the global village. And those who are pessimistic within the global perspective, focusing on a structural point on the profound and growing inequalities. Now, you see, here we have a two kind of understanding. One is pessimistic, another is optimistic. And one is giving the example of, you see, due to this rise of the communication technology, we are moving towards the global village. And another is talking about, we are not moving towards the global village, like Anthony Giddens talking about, it is not the global village, it is the global village. Means, those who have powerful, those who have resources, they are just extracting the resources of the those who are the weaker and they are looting uh, uh, their all the uh, raw materials and others. So, they are talking about even the cultural terms, it, it is a basically Americanization and Westernization. So, the two theory here developed. One is uh, the concept uh, developed by the uh, <coughs> uh, media theorist like uh, McLuhan and other by the cultural impulse theory that is the one of the must 
uh, respected and uh, uh, substantiated theory uh, that had been argued and we are going to discuss on, 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 on these issues. And here what we understood there are two kind of understanding. One those who are talking about that there is a global village kind of concept and another is talking about you see there is no nothing uh, that sort of basically it, it, it is a uh, imposition of the uh, powerful nations and it, it is based on inequality and there is a uh, a pattern of ownership of information and communications because if you see most of the informations and power has been basically uh, uh, gathered by the those who have a resources. So, here what we have been seeing this uh, slide that there is a two perspective uh, countering each other the, the concept pointed by the Marshall McLuhan and the other by the Harvard sealers and the, here the concept is about the global village, they are talking about see the, what is the global village, because see this is a theoretical paradigm, because uh, uh, every, in everyday life what we have found it, ki everyone is now talking about ki see the globe has, uh, glo uh, glo uh, world has, has been converted into the global village. We have easily accessible of everything, whether uh, uh, we want to purchase a book, whether we want to purchase a dress, whether we want to purchase a suit, whether we want to uh, get a higher education, whether we want to have a, a uh, job in the multinationals or transnational companies, whether we want to move from one place to the another place, if <coughs> everything has been now uh, easily accessible across the world. So, they are talking about you see, the world has been converted into the global village, but uh, the, 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 the scholar like Anthony Giddens, they talked about you no, know, no, it is not the global village, basically it is the global village, but that is the different thing, we are not here discussing about it. But this this uh, theory have been basically propounded by the media uh, in the uh, uh, those who are, who are the supporter of the uh, media theory, theoretician Marshall McLuhan, they are talking about, he, he coined the term in the 1960s about the global village kind of concept and he talked about, you see, it has been across the world due to this evolution of the communication technology, what we have been witnessed that everything is now easily accessible across the world because no physical places have been become a constraints for a, any human being. And due to the rise of the uh, uh, global infrastructure, due to the rise of the global communication system, so rise of the technological communications now each and everything has been easy, easily available for all of us. So, across the world, what we have been finding that like village systems, everything is available on your fingertips. So, now the society has been developed in such kind of such a way where nation ha, national culture has been losing its all relevance, national boundaries losing its all relevance and society has been getting integrated either it is economic terms, political terms, social terms or in other terms. Those who are the supporter of the cultural impulse, they are talking about nothing like nothing that sort of it. They are talking about you see, though <coughs> they are talking about you see, if you understand about this global village kind of concept, and those who are talking about you see, the world has been getting integrated economically, socially, and politically and culturally. That is nothing that of sort. Basically, it is a structure kind of thing where the powerful is dominating on the weaker and the powerful uh, nations have been transporting and disseminating its culture, hegemonizations and across the weaker nations like the, uh, in the African world or the Latin American world and the Asian world, people are more uh, oriented to, to adopt the those who are in the hands of the affairs rather than those who are not in the hands of uh, affairs. So, basically it is not a cultural homogenization, uh, it is a cultural homogenization kind of thing rather than it is a cultural heteronization kind of thing, because uh, you, you cannot find the African culture is easily adop uh, adopted in the America or in the western world. Basically, what you are finding that the American and the western uh, media have been easily accessible across the world, western clothes and American clothes easily accessible across the world. And they, due to their resources and powers, they have been dominating. So, they are talking about it is a structural flaw. Then this theory has been basically further explained by the Frankfurt School of Sociology, basically Theodore Adorno and Max, Max Horkheimer. They both have explained this, uh, this concept in their structural way and they are talking about, you see, this cultural globalization is nothing but 
it's a commodification of the culture because see the western media had been basically purchased everything and they sell what they want to sell it and everything had been now brought in so like a market system even if certain idea that if if they, if anyone want to perpetuate and if they have a resources they can because uh, because this media has been now uh, not working for imparting the education and knowledge but basically they are trying to uh, earn the profit so the system has been completely broken down and they are talking about you see uh, it has been threatening the vulnerable culture rather than it has been creating heterogeneities across the world and here the harvard sealer is the one of the main theorists who talk about you see the way the dominant media dominant culture uh, uh, threatening the marginal culture that has been very dangerous uh, the way people have been perpetuating the idea of the cultural globalization and it has been not the cultural globalization but it is a cultural homogenization and the sealer thes thesis is basically about the global culture is not something which draws in smooth or in form on the vast diversity of the culture in the world balancing or synthesizing this but rather consist of the global dimension dimension of the us and western culture here the basic understanding what or the cultural imperialist theory is you see if real there is a, if the in the, in reality if there is a dissemination of the culture then whether the marginal culture or whether the dominant culture everyone should have a equal accessibility across the world but that is not the case we cannot find uniform uh, disseminations of the information what we are finding that those who are on, on the hands of the affairs or those who are the dominating cultures they have been able to disseminating uh, uh, their information but those who are on the marginal <coughs> the, the, their culture has been getting threatened so across the world what we have been finding what the simple p hankin has said it you see there are, there, there have been class of uh, civilizations and uh, there are two religions across the world if you see the islam and the christianity a one kind of uh, confrontation has been going on and islam has been considered themselves you see it has been either discriminated and humiliated by the Christian, christians world and when they talk about the christian world then they talk about the western western world and here the symbol p, p hunting attend when there was a idea developed and perpetuated by the fukuyama that the end of the history they talked about it's not the end of the history but basically the now the real conflict has been started so here also the sailor thesis is you see this cultural globalization is nothing that sort of basically it's a cultural homogenization of the western world rather than it's a, a uniform cultural dissemination of the all the culture so they talk about you see like the, you take the example of coca cola disney mcdonalds levis mtb or hollywood whether uh, you find these all are the american companies across the world whether you go to the america whether you go to the western world whether you go to the india whether you go to the africa whether you go to the latin america everywhere you find this kind of uh, these companies but the same uh, same companies uh, of the other uh, under developing countries or developing countries you would find in the uh, western western world they are talking about you cannot find it so they are ta talking about you see the way you are talking about you see there is a uh, cultural globalization is going on in fact it is it has been not cultural globalization is going on basically it's a reinforcing the western uh, culture uh, across the world and it is undermining the national culture of other those who are uh, on the marginal so their their, their understanding basically the sealers and the uh, maclard those who talk about the uh, cultural imperialist theory they, they generally develop this kind of understanding to see whatever the companies we have been seeing it it is basically uh, a western led company and whatever the uh, idea we have been seeing across the world it is the western idea rather than it is the idea that is that is based on the heterogeneous understanding of the world and so there is east and west debate also in the uh, you have been seeing in the, on the environmental issues there is also east and west uh, debate you have been seen in the human uh, human right issues also there is a now in the international relations theory also there is a uh, differences between the uh, eastern notions and the western notion there is a subaltern studies also started uh, playing a big role but 
uh, apart from all these things because uh, uh, when we try to understand whether the cultural, uh, cultural globalization is uh, going on or not, those who are the supporter of the cultural globalization, they are talking about yes, the cultural globalization is uh, uh, creating a one kind of cosmopolitan world across the world, but those who are not like the cultural imperialist story, they are talking about okay, it is not the cultural uh, uh, heterogeneization, basically it is a cultural homogenization. And uh, equally, uh, when we study about the uh, Anthony Giddens concept of the runway world, he also talked about the, in the same language, you see, uh, it, it, is, it is basically a uh, Americanization and in certain case, it is a, it is a, a case of Westernization. And so, uh, <coughs> if you see uh, within these two concepts, we have been find that, you see, uh, further they, they argue that in cultural dominance or imposition because and the second they are talking about you see across the world if you see the English language and the US western cultural goods are across the world practicing. So, <clears throat> so they are talking about you see across the uh, world everywhere the system has been in developed in such a way where society has been more and more getting influenced uh, or reinforced with the western ideas rather than the ideas which had been doubled from their own world and that is very threatening to uh, for the others and and, that, uh, and when it had been uh, uh, understood by the whether the western world country like the france or eastern world country like the in the iran or the middle east country like iran and africa then the backlash backlash too, we have seen it even in the india you, uh, everywhere if you see the patanjali they have been always advertising this kind of things you see you have to take a swadeshi then there is a number of swadeshi movement has been going on so uh, <coughs> when we discuss about all these things we we find it you see uh, it has been created a new kind of uh, differences between countries to countries even in the uh, uh, it, there is a difference between the france and the america then also there is a differences between the Iran and the America, then there is also differences between the India and the other western world, then there is also a uh, tariff war between the Japan and the America, then there is also tariff war between the uh, China and the America. So, but most of time when we uh, see one side this kind of contradictions, but those who are the supporter of the uh, this uh, culture of globalization, they are talking about you see whether the company like McDonald's. Uh, or uh, Walmart, Wendy's, Nirulaj, Mossberger of Japan, Ruskyota, Bisto of the Russia. Whether you are going to the Western world, whether you are going to the Eastern world, whether you are going to the African world, you easily find a celebrity and you can enjoy all these things. And whether you are the Indian, whether you are the Latin American, whether you are the African, whether you are the Russians, everyone is so fond of the McDonald uh, burgers, everyone is ha having it. So, they are talking about, you see, <coughs> Across though uh, these all these companies, either it's the McDonald or the Walmart, you have seen it. The number of oppositions uh, against the Walmart when they started uh, uh, opening their uh, store in the retail sectors, there was a wider oppositions across the India. But Indian government had also permitted in the retail business. So they are talking about, you see, the cultural globalization has been taking place across the world, and people have a easily accessible. Everyone is very fond of Nirula, Pizza Hut. The most burger is not very popular here in the Japanese, but even if you would like to, you would have a like the Ruskyo Bistro, you cannot find uh, easily in the India, but they have also a lot of res restaurant chains across the world. So, these all are the things we are <coughs> getting it, and when we discuss in, uh, in, in next uh, uh, lectures, then we find it how this left versus right and this uh, cultural uh, uh, analysis would discuss about this comparative study would give a basic understanding about the cultural globalization kind of things. Thank you.